I'm Daniel Kennedy, Research Director at 451 Research. Today we're going to talk about open source security and some of the risks present in the M&A process. When we talked about the prevalence of open source in the past, we talked about the percentage of applications that contain open source. Uh, in the last five years, that metric isn't even relevant anymore. Now it's the percentage of open source in an application. You know, Synopsys' recent open source security and risk analysis report found that that percentage is over 50%, and that's up from 36% last year. Uh, Microsoft put a number on the importance of open source and the usage of it by paying $7.5 billion in stock for GitHub earlier this year. The entire generation of developers have come up using open source very naturally in their codes. Naturally is the generation before you libraries. So the question is not whether the application contains open source, but new application can this be assumed to contain open source code. There's a serious lack of security awareness around open source security risk in the M&A or merger and acquisition process. Uh, a lot of a company's IP is captured in the custom application code they've developed. And a lot of times that's what the acquiring company is looking at. And they're testing those applications and, and they're thinking about how they integrate into what they're trying to do. What they're not looking at is the more than 50% of open source code that'll be present in an application developed in the last five years. Uh, they need to look at that more closely because there could be significant security risks hidden inside that code. When we think about the recent Equifax breach, that was initially caused by a Struts vulnerability. Uh, there were other problems there, incident response, and how they handled the post-breach, but it started with an open source vulnerability. That open source vulnerability is still present in many code bases today, and that problem affected 140 million people. Now, GDPR has come into place with very strict penalties, $20 million, or in the case of an Equifax, it could have been up to 4% of turnover or revenue. Can you imagine those two things sort of coming together? Can you imagine an Equifax in a post-GDPR regulatory landscape? You know, we're talking about a significant fine being levied, and that's on top of the problems that Equifax already experienced. In the future, there's gonna be much less of an excuse for having an open source security problem. Uh, to a certain extent, Equifax with the Struts vulnerability and others have already used up that excuse and, and others are gonna be expected to have learned from their mistakes. The percentage of open source code within applications only continues to increase year over year. We know that it's over 50%. Developers are simply not going to rewrite code that others have already written. They're gonna concentrate on the custom elements of their code. Security vulnerabilities are only going up. Compliance is only getting more serious, with more serious penalties attached to not exercising due care around the creation of applications. And finally, where applications are hosted and how they're composed, from web APIs to stateless, are only making things more complicated. An application can be hosted in the cloud, it can be hosted in a container, it can be on-premise. But the network security controls that used to be able to depend on may or may not be there. Therefore, the application is gonna to have to be much more hard. And that means static analysis, and it means software composition analysis, or auditing of that open source code. If I can leave you with one piece of advice related to that, it's to, in an M&A situation, not acquire open source risk that you don't know about, and unintentionally jeopardize the value of that acquisition.